quick word, I'm getting a lot of inboxes. Uh, what's happening with War Al, a Geordie Boy's book. Uh, so it's coming out December the 1st. Um, I was due to be in Glasgow with him tomorrow. Sadly, I can't go because um, obviously I've got a wife who's still very ill. Uh, so she needs looking after. She's recovering from cancer. Um, so our Alan is going to be going up. Uh, I can't name it yet, but there's going to be the biggest paper out there covering the full story for several days. Uh, um, he's going to be on James English, um, several Celtic podcasts. Talk sport this week with Ali McCoist. Um, he was in the Newcastle papers last week. Uh, and I'm going to be speaking to all the papers very soon. You know, your, your middles of papers, Hartlepool, um, Birmingham. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, book is going to be coming out December the 1st. Alan is going to be going tomorrow, getting lots of copies. So he's going to be signing them all. So his book is going to be big, big news. Um, yeah, I'm. Uh, I've got him. I know Mal Alan's got a busy skeleton, busy schedule himself, and I don't call him Alan. It's Tomo. He always goes mad. So Tomo has a really busy schedule. He's uh, he's up in Glasgow next week for um, an evening with Henrik Larson, Chris Sutton, Martin O'Neill. Uh, a few others, I think I forgot, and then he's there again. Um, uh, he's, he's he's got you know he's got a really busy diary. Um, me and him are going to be in Greenock on January the fourteenth, and Newcastle November the fifth. Um, and I'm also going to have uh, like a book launch party um, in Teesside, mid middles of a red car. Uh, but yeah, I know I spoke to Bernie Slavin recently about getting him on his podcast and um yeah, but that's where it's at. So December the first, I'm getting lots and lots of people asking me. Um so the book is gonna be four pounds ninety-five by a Kindle, uh, and paperback is gonna be fourteen ninety-five, and that's gonna support four registered charities, Gallon Shearer Foundation. Ian Watson Charitable Fund, the Sir Bobby Robson Foundation and the Celtic Foundation. Um, so, so from December, um, you know, it's going to be an all 330 Waterstones. So for anyone who's out there now and you fancy getting the book pretty quick, then just go in your nearest Waterstones um, or even W.A. Smith for that matter. Uh, and just say, have you got a copy? Can I pre-order my copy for what Al? Um, Hooch, his nickname is. And you'll be finding out why when you read the book. Not my words. Uh, Neil Lennon's, lots of other people. That was the nickname. <laughs> it's quite a comical, it's quite, um, you know, they're one of the... Um, one of the sports journalists who read the book at the weekend uh, spoke to Tomo, and I thought Tomo rang him, and he answered the phone. And he went, "All right, coach." <laughs> it's really, really funny. And when you find out why, you'll go, "Fucking hell, yeah!" And you'll never ever watch Turn and Hooch ever the same ever again. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, no, we love we love Alan really. Um, but listen, I'm really, really excited to get this book. Done. It's been uh, it's had its challenges. <sighs> um, you know, Alan's had his wobbles. I've had my wobbles. Um, my wife's got cancer. Um, oh, I mean, obviously she's cured it well. Touch wood. She's uh, she's had it cut out of her now, and um, we we need to go back in a couple of weeks and find out if touch wood. But uh, it's it's a shame because I was really looking forward to going up with him tomorrow. And um, we were going to have a night in a, in a hotel, myself and Wartal. And uh, we'd have got up to all sorts. Mrs Boyle never, ever let me out. Because I'm not allowed out on my own. Because um, bad things happen. 
<sighs> no good ever comes of me when I'm out on my own and I learned that a few years back. So I'm not often allowed on the leash. So And Alan's pretty similar to me. So the two of us, but we'll put a pin there for now and um, yeah, the wife, the wife's upstairs and um, I don't know what I'm whispering for because I'm not going anyway. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we were, we were, you know, we were going to get up to all sorts. But um, listen guys, it is a really, really good book. I'm not just saying that. I mean, it meant the well, well to me when um, I got, obviously I'm not going to name him, but I got one of the top, top chief sports writers in Scotland and he was saying what a book like you know uh, listen the level the level of honesty Alan Thompson has showed and uh, listen I, I write books all the time but the wife said to me how would you feel if people put a dictaphone under your nose and wanted to talk about all the things I've done, the stupid things, the being involved in prison and the drugs and the, so many things. You know, there's a saying in life which is you've got to be young and stupid when you're young to be mature when you're old. So, and then you'll have a laugh about it when you're old. Well, I've got a lot of laughing to do when I'm older. Um, that's all I can say. And the people who know me in my close circles will know. Um, but yeah, you know, I, and uh, if I'm going to be brutally honest, I wouldn't have been as honest as uh, that guy. I just wouldn't have. You know, even if I'd have been Alan Thompson, there'd have been certain things that I'd have skated around that question. Um, you know, if you've read the Daily Record and <clears throat> if you know anything about Alan Thompson... Um, you know, the alleged things, the things he has done, you know, the guy scored some um, wonderful goals, big, big game goals. And I'm talking about goals against like, free against Liverpool, um, Bayern Munich, <sighs> Arsenal, Leeds, uh, Rosenberg, Shakhtar Donetsk, um, seven against Rangers. He was a man who just, like Ali McCoy said to me, he was just someone born to play in the greatest derby in the world. Um, he was just like old my beer and he just took charge. He was just like that. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? And whether he, whether he scored seven goals against Stefan Kloss, whether he got sent off three times, whether he caused the riot and ran off. Um, he was always, always in the thick of, th thick of things, whether he was involved or whether he started it and went missing. He, Thompson was just someone who, you know, like Craig Bellamy, he just couldn't help but just fucking cause a riot everywhere he went. Um, yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, he's very much like that, but but we love him. He's lovable as fuck. My wife is completely smitten with him. My wife actually said to me the other week, she said, Jamie, I can't actually imagine a life now pre-Alan Thompson. <laughs> and, uh, you know, listen, I mean, Alan trusts me and I trust him. And, you know, he's like me and Paul Venice. We've got each other's back and, uh, you know, things will never get repeated um, things will always stay between us, but um, he's a character and um, he's a flawed character. He's emotional as fuck. And, uh, you know, he could cause a fight in a, in a phone box by himself. But um, he's just someone who's got a good heart and he's, he's a fucking good guy and I fell in love with him. Uh, anyway, his book is a barrel of laughs, lots of humour in it, lots of banter. Um, particularly, you know, I've, 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 I've added a lot of people in, your Chris Sutton's, your Ali McCoist's, um, your Lee Clark's, your Stan Collymore's, um, oh, there's some big, big names, some quite famous people in this book. Um, but credit to Alan because he hasn't avoided anything and I would have done. I'm not just saying this, but he's the only person in, I've got 21 books on Amazon. 
uh, one more to go on. So I've done 22 books. And uh, he was the only person on the Holy Bible who didn't avoid one question. Don't know why. He might regret it when this book comes out. But uh, do you know what? I'll take my hat off to him. And, uh, you know, if, if it's used against him, then so be it. But he's only human. And uh, just because he was once this Alan the Superstar, and we all worshipped at the Temple of Thompson, um, he's just, just one of the lads. And um, I think that's why he gets me, because he's quite... Um, how can I put it? Hard work. But good hard work. Um, and not everyone gets me. I'm quite mad, mate. I'm... People will either like me or think I fucking can't stand that Jamie Boyle. There's no in between. And um, Alan got me, got me before he'd even met me. And, uh, you know, I, I got him. And um, and he's a friend for life. He's got a friend with me for life. And uh, anything I can do for him, I will. My wife loves him. My kids love him. Uh, and I'm, I'm hoping, I'd like to think we can do another book in a couple of years. But before that... Alan Thompson, a Geordie boy, and I always say, what's it about? The clues in the name. This guy, oh, God, he is, oh, yeah, what a life he's lived. What a career he's lived. Um, he lived the dream that I've dreamt about. You know, he's a true story. When I was a kid, um, when I was about eight, maybe nine, ten, I can't remember, but... My uh, mum my remembers this. I written to Jimmy Savile and I asked to be a ball boy for Celtic. Um, and he never got back to me. And uh, and that's a true story. That's not even lies. And looking back on it now as 41, it's a good job I was an ugly little bastard. <laughs> that's a true story. So I, I grew up wanting to be what he'd done. Uh, 227 appearances, 51 goals, the man lived the dream and the millions of Celtic fans across the world will all remember fondly um, with great love, great memories, Alan Thompson and this book is going to go out there and uh, I wanted to show Alan the love that he never really got when he left Celtic, you know, it was, uh, and you'll read about that in the book so I'm not going to go into it. But he deserved a better ending than he got. Um, but yeah, a Geordie boy is going to be coming very soon. I'm going to put the link in this bio. So if anyone fancies getting a copy of Alan Thompson, a Geordie boy, click on the link uh, and that will put you through to Warcry Publishing. Pre-order it now. And uh, as I said, go to go into any of the 330 Waterstones in Great Britain, Ireland, Scotland, Wales and... Uh, and just go and just say, listen, guys, there's a book coming out, which is The Fucking Dog's Bollocks by Jamie Boyle. I need this book now. So get it ordered. Um, and anyone out there who uh, who um, would fancy hiring Alan for a function or um, even speaking to me about this book in the media or... Uh, Wanting him on the podcast, anything like that, get in touch with me at Jamie Boyle Ten on Twitter, and uh, I'll arrange it with uh, War Al. I don't even know how you these Geordies. Uh, that's not even English, but they call each other War Jackie, uh, War Kid, and all War Lad and all that. And it's Alan Tom was one of the mildest Geordies I've ever met, but you still you still do need to lip read him sometimes. Um, his stepdaughter went to visit at Newcastle the other week. For the first time, and um, Tomo's missus said to me, she said she was just looking at people like she just walked on the set of Planet of the Apes. It was like, who the fuck are they? is this a new re is this a new breed um, of the Geordies? It's just like, hang on, these people fucking live this way, and uh, yeah, you know, because uh, obviously they're from Cheshire, but I grew up forty two mile in Middlesbrough for, for most of my life. And uh, I can't understand a lot of what they say. I'm convinced sometimes it's not even a language. Um, but there you go. But he is actually one of the mild ones, Wartal. 
But uh, a Geordie boy is coming soon by myself. Thanks for your time, guys. Don't forget to click and subscribe. And there's a Facebook page on... Facebook, but there's a clue in the name. Facebook page called A Geordie Boy, Alan Thompson. Get in touch because um, myself and Tomo's lovely missus is on that as well. Thanks for your time, guys. Don't forget to click and subscribe. God bless. And thank you for your interest and support.